Welcome, Vault Dwellers. My name is Nacho Bidness. So today, we're starting out our before shot with Chidi McCheekface. If you want to know more about her and why I'm using this character for the before shots, go watch the Chidi McCheekface intro video. So let's get right into it with Egret Tours Marina. Now this is completely untouched with no visible mods running and I wanted this to be the place where my level 4 merchants were resided. Unfortunately by the time I got around to forcing or trying to force the random encounters for those level 4 merchants my game had glitched and I no longer get random encounters of any kind which is too bad. Random monsters still spawn but no people. So that's okay we can still make an interesting settlement at this place that is trader centric. So I just kind of want to show the whole place before we touch anything. There are some assets that I wish that I had not scrapped, like that boat, and a lot of these crates and things, because even with mods, you can't get those back. And like that boat, for example, I kind of wish that I still had that. But ultimately, not worth restarting the settlement entirely, although. As you'll see, the amount of time that I spent updating it for mods, it almost ended up being like a brand new build. So because we're going to have a lot of merchants here, I got to thinking about what does a mall look like in the Fallout universe. So, you know, it's a larger building with smaller buildings inside of it and trader stands so that's what I've built here and I'm going to show it to you now so we're back with a familiar face let's take a look at the mall we've got a provisioner coming out this is a busy place and I will try and mention the major mods of course they've got spring in the in the commonwealth and the greener mods and another provisioner coming out we've also got something called the settlement supplies expansion xbox one which i at first ignored because i thought it was just another unlimited crafting supplies mod it's not oh my gosh it has tons and tons of great new things to play with like that tree that tree is something that I placed down in the, in the build menu so we've got some squatters that are living outside the settlement in this bus which is kind of low rent low income whatever you want to call it they've they've set up a couple of beds and are trying to live out of here kind of like an rv but they're hoping to move inside someday however like all my settlements it's got all, all the facilities so in-game part of the story this is a place that's associated with the followers of the followers of the apocalypse which <clears throat> if you are not familiar with the lore they were a west coast organization that appeared in fallout 1 and fallout new vegas they despite the name are humanitarians that are mostly interested in 
collecting and preserving technology, but unlike the Brotherhood of Steel, they want to spread that knowledge across mankind to try and make sure something like the Great War can never happen again. Now it's been six years since we saw the followers of the apocalypse in New Vegas. New Vegas took place in 2281. Fallout 4 takes place in 2287. So I don't think it's that much of a stretch to think that we might be seeing just kind of the first hints of follower outposts over here on the East Coast. So Their journey across the country has changed them a little bit. They are less humanitarian than they used to be, but they're still ready and willing to help people, but they're also becoming more interested in trade. So let's come inside here. I've got just some bits of junk and stuff under these guard stations, mainly just to break up the profile and come up here, we take a look. We have we have ammo boxes for decoration that's also out of that settlement supplies expansion Xbox or sex as <laughs> it shows up in the menu. So We've got a nice view up the road. We're looking for people as they come in. We've also got over here at this other guard tower a good line on those super mutants that hang out in that train yard up the hill. So this place has some good overland routes for trade. I checked it. Between here and Diamond City, I ran all the way up to Diamond City, and the only thing I encountered was a couple of rad stakes. That's it. Um, but there also, as we come down this main street, which I think looks pretty good, but looks even better at night, we've also got, courtesy of the Port Royal mod, who it was which was done by the same guy who did the sex mod we've got boats and I checked this too this river out here is navigable for a long way so you can go all the way to the marshes in the south and you can go almost to the ocean there's one bridge that is too low it is not a drawbridge that you can sail past. So there's a little spot out here that is just a place to sit and have a quiet game of chess and enjoy the sound of the water lapping up here and maybe also keep an eye out for any boats coming up the river. The boat itself, if I had one complaint, it is that there's no control console or anything in here and I kind of did the best I could to give an impression of that but there is there's nothing in there that you could use to steer the boat or run the engine I'm hoping that eventually the mod author will give us something there now this is a restaurant that the followers found called Up and Over Cram Burgers. They still serve cram here because they feel obligated to by the sign, but since most cram is not good anymore, mainly it is it, it's other kinds of food available in the wasteland. This is a fully stocked restaurant with a refrigerator and coffee and other beverages here on the shelves along with some plates and glasses and things. Room to keep the place clean. You can see how clean the floors are because I scrapped all the trash that was in here. The stove to cook on and 
there's that pram that I mentioned along with some clean plates and you do want to watch out though this woman that runs the place kind of a bitch and if she doesn't like you she will slip you a little bit of rat poison not enough to kill you but it's going to make you really really sick so you can see here that I have no trading stand and yet this woman is doing all the animations as if there was a vendor here and that's and you can even come up to her and if you wanted to you could barter with her and that's because I am using something called the improved level 4 or was it level 3 anyways improved improved vendors and or improved shops and it allows us to it takes a long time to get in this menu when you got this many mods running so it allows us to come in here and for any of the six major types of vendor we can throw down a counter or a mat or a cash register and assign a person to it and they will do all the normal things that a vendor will do. Unfortunately the cash register only works with modded objects and so far I haven't actually found a modded object that the cash register will work with. The mod author is uh, I believe working on it. So I did want to show off this menu board which is very obviously inspired by the great in and out burger I wish we had those where I live um, another sign from the Ruffets mod which is another one of my absolute favorite mods so the followers being the followers they do have access to power it's not the highest tech but it is power and it is isolated from the rest of the settlement for the noise and the fumes we've also got a two holer that uh, hangs out over the river now I didn't go crazy with adding people at this place you can see that I've got 22 people here and 22 food 43 water so that they've got something to trade and 22 beds I mean it's it's about the right size for this settlement we've got a garage which has crafting stations the settlement leader has some designs on how to use this space to get even more merchants in instead of these crafting supplies in my power armor station but real world reason why this is not built up much more is because my frame rates really started to drop in the settlement and you kind of see it there probably that uh, if I wasn't careful and I didn't stop building this settlement would go from a video to a slideshow because the frame rates were would just keep getting worse so we've got a bed in a corner here we're gonna pretend that that's for someone that is not very well off that is employed by the merchants same with this bed over here and this one here I did have some ideas about some things to do with some giddy up buttercup that don't have enough my console doesn't have enough oomph to keep going here so I'll save those for another time come out here on the roof and we've got some, we've got some turrets that overlook the usual spawn points for attacks which usually come from over there as well as our settlement recruitment beacon. The apartment building over here, I think, 
looks pretty nice because, as I mentioned in my Ten Pines video, we have windows now, and that is through, I believe, the Snap and Build mod. And windows make me very happy. Stupidly giddy for something so simple. I figure that the followers of the apocalypse have mastered the, the basic technology of glass blowing and can handle making a few windows so it doesn't feel completely out of out of the lore to have a, a building with some nice glass windows. So I say nice, although they are, you can see there maybe a little bit, they are kind of cloudy, which again I think kind of puts us back into lore friendly territory. We've got some fertilizer there for our farming area. These folks, they do farm enough to sustain themselves, but they like to supplement with other things that they trade for. There's just exactly enough food here for the number of settlers that I have. When we go inside this apartment building and someone's stacked up some excess cement that they didn't need, For the most part, oh, and there's there's our settlement kitty cat. For the most part, the junk decoration has really improved. Uh, I decorated this settlement once before, before the patch that fixed junk, and there was hardly anything that didn't end up flying off tables and other stuff. So. Coming back here was kind of painful in that I had to completely redecorate the entire settlement again. But this time everything seems stable, although every once in a while I find something like this is almost always thrown off the table whenever I come in here. In fact, I fixed this before I started recording and it's already gone over again. But that's pretty minor. So the apartment building houses people that work in the mall for the most part as well as some of the followers who go out on missions to kind of spread the word that they're in the area and willing to help. Each of these apartments will get just a little bit better. I am so glad that we have a queen size bed because, it, you know, the scrappy version I think looks great. but. Having a queen size bed makes it so much. Oh, hey, there's there's Phyllis. Hello, Phyllis. Uh, having a queen size bed makes it much easier to role play. For example, couples or, or uh, families, which that's what we've got in here. Now, I do wish maybe we had a few more options when it came to scrappier queen size bed. This is out of a renovated furniture mod doesn't quite look right, but hey, I'll take what I can get. So we've got a married couple who lives in here, they've got a kid, and they've got a baby. With just a few little baby things. Let's, let's go upstairs. We've got our lovely windows, and it has gotten way, way easier to put walls inside of buildings. Before mods, this would have taken me, I don't even know if I could have done it before mods, but it certainly would have taken a lot longer than it actually did. So this is a room of a couple of bachelor followers that are here to spread the word of their ideals. We now have functional functional bunk beds, thank God, as well as we're going to talk about the mod that I use to make that shelf yeah, once we go inside the mall. So one of these guys is uh, trying to write the great wasteland novel. He's not having the best of luck, but. Uh, He's still trying. Over here, we've got a couple of single women that live 
in this room. It's a fairly bland room. <laughs> I can't think of anything more to say about that one. In here we've got really the, uh, the richest merchant in the settlement. He's got a functional holotape player along with several tapes. He's even got matching furniture matching new furniture from the renovated furniture mod a television that actually works and a lot of other trappings so he's got a balcony out here that he can use uh, he and his wife can use basically to keep an eye on what's essentially Main Street here see what caravans are in, see when, hear and see when the guards let somebody in, if there's somebody that uh, they look like they might want to pay some personal attention to. So, let's just go run back outside real quick. I think we've covered pretty much the entire settlement except for the mall itself which, let's look at the time here. Been recording long enough that I think that I'm gonna cover the nighttime shots of the settlement and of and the mall itself in another part. So, if you liked what you saw, hit the like button. If you wanna see more, hit subscribe. If you didn't like, Please tell me why, so I can try and do better next time. This one is a little light on story, but after my video at, at uh, Coastal Cottage, I kind of just wanted to do something that was just fun. So thanks very much for watching. This is Nacho Business saying it's great big wasteland out there. Let's go have fun in it.